Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today, we'll review the Dora series and analyze vocabulary as well as some basic structures in the video. In case you haven't watched the Dora series, I will leave a link in the description. Now, let's watch and learn English through the first three episodes of the Dora series. We will start with the first episode. We will watch some parts of this episode again. This time, pay attention to highlighted words. Hello, my name is Dora. I'm 23 years old. I am a fresh graduate with a major in journalism. I was born and raised in Boston, a very beautiful harbor city. Boston is best known for its famous baked beans. Let's start with the word journalism. Now, journalism is a noun. It means writing news for newspapers or websites, or making news shows on TV or radio. Like in our dialogue, Dora studied journalism. She learned how to be a good news writer. That was journalism. Next, there's a phrase is best known for. This phrase helps us talk about what a place or thing is famous for. For example, in our dialogue, we heard Boston is best known for its famous baked beans. This means when people think of Boston, they often think of its baked beans. Boston is famous for this food. He was best known for his work with the peanut. Since I was small, I have always dreamt about being a successful reporter. That's why I decided to move to New York City to pursue that dream. Today is the first day I have been to New York City and met my flatmate, Jess, to start a new life. Stay tuned to see what experiences that I can gain through this journey. A reporter. A person who finds information and writes news stories or tells them on TV or radio. Reporters tell people what's happening in the world. In our story, Dora wants to be a reporter. She wants to tell news stories to people. I'm a reporter. Let's look at the word pursue. Pursue means to try very hard to do something or to make something happen, especially something that's important to you. In our dialogue, Dora moves to New York City to pursue her dream. This means she goes there to try hard to make her dream of being a reporter come true. Okay, I'm going to keep pursuing what I'm pursuing. You just told me that you wanted to become a reporter. Exactly. One of my motivations to move to New York City. The city is just so fabulous. It is. I hope that you like it. Please, follow me this way. Yes, thank you. Your room number is 10A, so it'll take a bit of time with all these belongings. Thank you for helping me. You're welcome. Here we go. Motivations is the reason why you do something. It's like the push inside you that makes you want to do things. In our dialogue, Dora's motivation to move to New York City is to become a reporter. That means her reason or her push to go to New York is to follow her dream of being a reporter. My motivation is motivation. Fabulous is a fun word. It means really, really good or wonderful. When Dora says the city is fabulous, she means New York City is very wonderful and she likes it a lot. It's fabulous, just fabulous. Oh, Belongings are the things that you own like clothes, books, or a phone. In the dialogue, Dora has many belongings to move into her new room. This means she has many things she owns to bring with her. Pack my belongings. What are you making, Jess? It smells so good. Oh, I'm making Russian salad, mashed potatoes, and steaks for tonight. Wow, that's so cool, Jess. I'm so clumsy when it comes to cooking. I bet I can learn a lot of things from you. Sure. Don't be a stranger, Dora. Mike and I are your friends now. Yeah, we're very happy to have you here. Jess is dying for a flatmate like you. Aw, thank you two so much. 
Here we have the phrase when it comes to. When it comes to is a common English phrase used to introduce a specific topic or area of discussion. It's like saying talking about or regarding. In the sentence, I'm so clumsy when it comes to cooking. She means that regarding the topic of cooking, she feels she is not very skilled or graceful. When it comes to appreciation. Dying for is an informal expression. It doesn't mean literally dying. It's just a way to say someone really wants something. In the conversation, Jess really wanted or was very eager to have a flatmate like Dora. It shows Jess's strong desire to have a good flatmate. I'm dying for an update here. How about you, Mike? What is your job? I'm a computer scientist. I work with computers and computational systems. He sounds like such a badass when saying about computer stuff, right? Yeah, computer science is a very competing and rewarding field now. I'm also very curious about how you two met. Fill me in on your story. A badass is an informal slang term used to describe someone who is very impressive, cool, or excellent at what they do. It's a compliment, but it's informal, so we use it with friends or in casual situations. When Jess says, he sounds like such a badass when talking about computer stuff. She means that Mike seems very cool and impressive when he talks about his work in computer science. He's not a badass. I'm not a badass. There's Fill somebody in on something means asking someone to tell you more details about something, especially about their life or experiences. It's like saying, tell me more about it. When Dora says, fill me in on your story, She's asking Mike and Jess to tell more about how they met and their background. It shows interest in learning more about their personal story. Fill me in on the details of your little proposal. I was feeling like what he said was the sincerest thing I had ever heard in my entire life. We've been together ever since. You are relationship goals. Thank you, Dora. By the way, how is your family in Boston doing? Sincere is an adjective that describes someone who is honest and genuine in what they say or do. When you are sincere, you mean what you say and you are truthful and heartfelt. In the sentence, I was feeling like what he said was the sincerest thing I had ever heard in my entire life. Jess means that she felt that the words spoken by Mike were very honest and heartfelt. That is sincere. So sincere. Um, we made breakfast. Relationship goals is a phrase used to describe a relationship that others see as perfect or ideal. It's often used informally, especially on social media. It's used to compliment a couple whose relationship is admired and seen as something to aspire to. It's a way of saying your relationship is so wonderful that it sets a standard for others. Because you two are like relationship goals. This is your room. This is your closet where you can put your clothes and belongings. We will share the same bathroom. Yes, I see. I'll be outside in case you need anything. Make yourself at home because it's your room and you are home now. Thank you so much, Jess. Closet is a tall recess or wardrobe with a door used for storage. In houses or apartments, a closet is often used to store clothes and sometimes other items like shoes or suitcases. When Jess says, this is your closet where you can put your clothes and belongings, she means that Dora has a small space or room where she can store her clothes and other personal items. Brian, that's a closet. Make yourself at home is a friendly phrase used to make someone feel comfortable in your house or space. It's like saying, feel relaxed, use the space as if it was your own home. Jess tells Dora to make yourself at home because it's your room and you are home now. Here, 
Jess is telling Dora to feel comfortable and at ease in her new room, as if it were her own home. Make yourself at home. And that's episode one. Let's move on to episode two. Jess, tomorrow will be a very big day for me. What's that, girl? You seem quite nervous. I'm going to have a job interview at the New York Headlines office at 10 o'clock tomorrow. Pardon? New York Headlines? You were talking about New York Headlines with Sarah Huffersmith, one of the most famous editors of the decade. I am. Sarah will be one of my interviewers. Oh my god, that's unbelievable. You gotta ask Sarah for an autograph for me, Dora. Jess, I'm being stressed out right now. Stop kidding. Okay, fine then. So, tell me what you are afraid of the most. You mean my fears? Yeah, tell me things that scare you. I don't think that I like that animal very much. You're terrified by spiders? Yes, I'm also afraid of the dark and being stuck in a rut. Being stuck in a rut, huh? You meant you're afraid of doing something over and over again, right? Yeah, that's right. Repetition is probably what I'm scared of the most. Jess, tomorrow will be a very big day for me. What's that, girl? You seem quite nervous. I'm going to have a job interview at the New York Headlines office at 10 o'clock tomorrow. This sentence is a perfect example of the simple future tense. It talks about a decision or a plan for the future. You can spot this tense by the phrase going to, followed by a verb. In our sentence, going to have is used to express a future plan. Now let's see some more examples I'm going to visit my grandparents next weekend. She's going to start her new job on Monday. Remember, use going to when you have decided to do something before speaking. Pardon? New York headlines? You were talking about New York headlines with Sarah Huffersmith, one of the most famous editors of the decade. I am. Sarah will be one of my interviewers. Oh my god, that's unbelievable. You gotta ask Sarah for an autograph for me, Dora. An autograph is a famous person's signature that they give as a souvenir. For example, I got a famous singer's autograph at the concert. It means you have received the singer's signature. Lisa's autograph? A Pooh's autograph? Hey, give me an autograph! Jess, I'm being stressed out right now. Stop kidding. Okay, fine then. So, tell me what you are afraid of the most. You mean my fears? Yeah, tell me things that scare you. Next, afraid of. Fears and scare. These are synonyms. They are related to feeling fear or being frightened. Are you afraid of snakes? Afraid? I'm facing my fears. Not scared. Not scared. Terrified. This word means being extremely scared or afraid. It's a stronger word than just afraid or scared. For example, I am terrified of spiders. It means that spiders make you feel very, very scared, more than just uncomfortable or slightly afraid. I am terrified for my life. I was absolutely terrified. I could use some help with an outfit that I should wear into the interview tomorrow. Okay, chop chop, show me what you got, Dora. Oh, I'm wondering what I should wear. The first outfit is a basic one with a white shirt and a navy blue skirt. The second set includes a white shirt, black trousers, and a black jacket. So, what do you think, Jess? I think the first outfit is a bit boring, but the second one is chunky with that jacket. The weather now is not that cold to wear jackets. 
Hmm, you're right. To impress an interviewer like Sarah Hufersmith, you should wear something simple but still elegant. Don't forget to show the energetic side of your characteristics, too. So, what should I wear, Jess? My choice is for the second outfit, but you've got to lose that jacket. A simple white shirt and black trousers are enough. Are you sure? 100%. Just be yourself and you will nail it. I could use some help with an outfit that I should wear into the interview tomorrow. Okay, chop chop, show me what you got, Dora. Oh, I'm wondering what I should wear. The first outfit is a basic one with a white shirt and a navy blue skirt. The second set includes a white shirt, black trousers, and a black jacket. First, shirt. A shirt is a type of clothing for your upper body, often with buttons in front. Like, he wore a blue shirt. It means he put on a blue shirt. Oh, the oh, shirt! I love this shirt! Trousers is type of clothing worn on the lower half of the body to cover the legs but the term trousers is typically used in British English, while pants is used in American English. Pull on your trousers. Jacket is a clothing item for the upper body, often worn outside. It's lighter than a coat. He put on his jacket. Means he wore it, maybe because it's cold outside. Jacket on. I don't have a jacket Jacket on. on. So, what do you think, Jess? I think the first outfit is a bit boring, but the second one is chunky with that jacket. The weather now is not that cold to wear jackets. Hmm, you're right. To impress an interviewer like Sarah Hufersmith, you should wear something simple but still elegant. Chunky means something is thick and heavy, like a chunky sweater is a thick, warm sweater. In this situation, Jess wants to say that this jacket will make Dora look heavier. Elegant means something looks beautiful and stylish. An elegant dress is a very nice and stylish dress. Ooh, Dave looks so elegant. So, what should I wear, Jess? My choice is for the second outfit, but you've got to lose that jacket. A simple white shirt and black trousers are enough. Are you sure? 100%. Just be yourself and you will nail it. You will nail it. It is a way to say you will do it very well. It's like saying you will be great. For example, you will nail the test, means you will do very well on the test. Coach, you nailed it, Jimmy, you nailed it. Dora, do you have any working experiences in reporting and writing articles? I do. I used to be president of my university broadcasting club. I've also finished my six-month internship at one of the local newspaper offices. That's impressive. I think you have a very solid background to become a reporter at the NYH. But can I ask one more question? Yes, please do. Where do you see yourself in the next five years? Right now, it's just kind of in the matter of five years from now, my expectation is that I can be a professional reporter. Because I just love reporting so much. I think it's one of the ways to spread kindness and bring up-to-date news and information to everyone. Therefore, I'll try my very best to observe, to learn, and to share what I know to people. Dora, do you have any working experiences in reporting and writing articles? I do. I used to be president of my university broadcasting club. I've also finished my six-month internship at one of the local newspaper offices. Working experiences are the jobs you have done. 
like she has many working experiences. It means she has worked in many jobs. Well, that could be some valuable work experience. Internship is a time when you learn work by doing the job, often for a short time. He is doing an internship, means he is learning work by working. I got the internship. That's impressive. I think you have a very solid background to become a reporter at the NYH. But can I ask one more question? Yes, please do. Where do you see yourself in the next five years? Solid background means you have strong experience or knowledge. She has a solid background in marketing. Means she knows a lot about marketing. I have a solid background in, uh, in sales. In the matter of five years from now, my expectation is that I can be a professional reporter. Because I just love reporting so much. I think it's one of the ways to spread kindness and bring up-to-date news and information to everyone. Therefore, I'll try my very best to observe, to learn, and to share what I know to people. Expectation is what you think or hope will happen. His expectations are high, means he thinks or hopes for good things. I exceeded my expectations. Up to date means something is current or has the latest information. Keep your resume up to date means keep your resume with the newest information. Tags up to date. Very good, Seymour. Watch with subtitles. Don't you have eyes? Get out of my way. Oh, I'm sorry, madam. What's wrong with that old lady? Where is Jess going now? Hey, Dora. I'm sorry for coming late. What happened to you, buddy? I had to take two taxis to be here. Why? The first taxi driver was driving like there was something chasing him. So I insisted on getting out of that car. The second driver drove as slowly as a snail, but I couldn't do anything about it. Poor you, Jess. Learn with the video. Don't you have eyes? Get out of my way. Oh, I'm sorry, madam. The phrase get out of my way means you want someone who is blocking you to move so you can go through. It's used when someone is in your way and you need them to move so you can keep going. Let's see another example in the amazing world of gumball Watch with subtitles. What do you want to buy? Oh, I want to buy some towels and a new shampoo. Okay, I don't know much about towels, but I can definitely help you pick the right shampoo for that beautiful brown curly hair. Thank you, buddy. By the way, what did they ask you in the interview? Not too much. They asked about my working experiences and my future plan. Oh, future plan. What did you say? I said I just wanted to follow the career of a reporter since it's my passion. On point. Learn with the video. What do you want to buy? Oh, I want to buy some towels and a new shampoo. Okay. I don't know much about towels. A towel is a piece of cloth you use to dry yourself or something else. After you wash or swim, you use a towel to get dry. Shampoo is a soap for your hair. You use it to clean your hair and scalp. You put it on your wet hair, make it foamy, and then rinse it off with water. Oh, future plan. What did you say? I said I just wanted to follow the career of a reporter since it's my passion. On point. 
follow the career means to choose and work in a certain kind of job. For example, if someone says they want to follow the career of a nurse, it means they want to work as a nurse. When something is on point, it means it's just right or perfect. For example, if your friend's outfit looks great, you might say your style is on point today, meaning they look really good. You're on point. Watch with subtitles. We don't have so many big supermarkets like this in Boston. In New York, supermarkets are always divided into sections, such as bakery, dairy, produce like fruits and vegetables, frozens, meat, and the deli. We also have a general grocery section where one can find packaged goods, cleaning supplies, and personal hygiene items. Learn with the video. We also have a general grocery section where one can find packaged goods, cleaning supplies, and personal hygiene items. Personal hygiene is about keeping your body clean. This includes things like taking a bath, washing your hands, and brushing your teeth. For example, you practice personal hygiene when you wash your hands before eating or take a shower after playing sports. Good personal hygiene. Watch with subtitles. Oh, our taxi is here. Let's head home, Dora. I'll be pleased to do so. I'm so hungry now. You are? My stomach is screaming for food now. Let's get going then. Learn with the video. You are? My stomach is screaming for food now. Screaming for food is a funny way to say you're very hungry. It's like your stomach is yelling because it wants to eat. It doesn't mean actual screaming. It's just a way to say you really need to eat soon because you feel so hungry. Watch with subtitles. Now I need you to mince the beef and make some meatballs. I'll take care of the pasta. Yes, ma'am. I can do it like shooting fish in a barrel. You mean making meatballs is easy, right? Yes, shooting fish in a barrel means doing something easily. In Boston, we have a lot of docks and harbors. We eat fish almost every single day. So we have that expression. Learn with the video. Now I need you to mince the beef and make some meatballs. I'll take care of the pasta. When you mince something in cooking, it means you chop it up into very small pieces. For example, when you mince garlic, you cut it up so tiny that it's almost like a paste. You do what? Mince the mushrooms. Yes, ma'am. I can do it like shooting fish in a barrel. You mean making meatballs is easy, right? This is an expression that means something is very easy to do. It's like saying if fish were in a barrel, they would be easy to shoot. So, if something is as easy as shooting fish in a barrel, it means it's really simple. It's like shooting fish in a barrel. In Boston, we have a lot of docks and harbors. We eat fish almost every single day. So, we have that expression. A harbor is a place near the water where boats and ships can be safe from the waves and storm. It's like a parking lot for boats, where they can stay when they are not sailing in the sea. Watch with subtitles. Oh, on an unrelated note, Jess, how's Mike doing? I haven't seen him here for nearly a week now. He's on a business trip in Texas. Did you know that in Texas, people eat fried butter? They do? Fried butter? Doesn't sound any good. Mike told me so. He hasn't got the gut to try it yet. But I bet he will since he's flying back to New York tomorrow. Learn with the video. They do? Fried butter? Doesn't sound any good. Fried butter is a kind of unusual food. It's butter that has been cooked in hot oil until it gets a crispy outside. 
People make it by freezing butter, covering it in a batter, like a thick mixture of flour and liquid, and then frying it. It's like frying chicken or fish, but with butter inside. It's known for being a very rich and heavy snack. That's the end of the video. Thank you for watching. Remember to practice English every day to improve your skills. Watch the video at least three times a week and repeat daily conversations to improve your listening and speaking skills fast. Try to mimic the intonation and pronunciation in the video to enhance your speaking fluency and pronunciation. Don't forget to like, share, and comment on my video. Please subscribe to the Learn English with Jessica channel to watch more helpful videos.